Alrighty guys, we're back for Space Pirates, and this is a Lost Caverns of Ixalan Standard Brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked. First things first, this was a suggestion down in the comments, so thank you so much for the suggestion. It was definitely a fun list to put together. Rockin' Mind Link Mech in this one. This is a 3-mana, 4-3 artifact vehicle with a crew for only one. Nice. As flying, and when it becomes crewed for the first time each turn, until end of turn, it becomes a copy of target non-legendary creature that crewed it this turn, except it's a 4-3. It's a vehicle artifact in addition to its other types, and it has flying as well. We have a really cool combo here with the Mind Link mech to go ahead and crew this up with Goblin Tomb Raider. A 1-mana one 1-2, one as long as you control an artifact. Goblin Tomb Raider gets plus 1 plus 0 and has haste as well. So if you have that turn one or turn two Tomb Raider into that turn three Mind Link mech and you crew this up with the Tomb Raider, while this in and of itself is an artifact, it becomes Tomb Raider. So it gets that plus one plus oh, and it gets that haste too. Uh, that actually seems pretty wild, man. I mean, three mana, five, three flying haste. <laughs> That's a chunk of damage uh, flying in the air on turn three. So I'm excited to see how often we actually get to pull that off. We do have other pirates here on the top end. Spyglass Siren, of course, making the cut. All four of them. One mana, one one, flying. When it ETBs, you get that map token. And we have a little bit of an artifact theme in here. So that map token is going to go a long way regardless of what you do with it. We do have a little bit of removal here with three voltage surge. Maybe we sacrifice that map token to do four damage to something. We'll see, we'll see. Might as well finish going over the one drops. We have three Iron Apprentice in here too. One mana, zero, zero, but it ETBs with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Then when it dies, if it had counters on it, you put those counters on target creature you control. That's another cool thing you can do with the uh, map tokens explore, right? Maybe you can get extra counters onto the apprentice, and then when it inevitably dies to some form of spot removal from the opponent, you can slam those counters elsewhere, uh, potentially, right? Or you could always sacrifice the apprentice to a voltage surge and plug those counters on like a flying creature or something too. That could be pretty cool. Okay, let's go over the two mana uh, cards. We got all four Oaken Sirens. This is a two mana, one, two, flying vigilance, and you can tap it to add a blue mana. Uh, spend this mana only to cast an artifact spell or activate an ability of an artifact source. So for example, artifact source like a map, but we also have other artifacts that we wouldn't mind casting out with the Oaken Siren. It, it is an artifact creature in and of itself too, so it can always uh, tap to cast more of itself. Since it is a 1-2 Flying Vigilance, we wouldn't mind copying it with the Mind Link mech to give the mech Vigilance when it is flying in too, so that all sounds pretty cool, man. And we do have more ships in here. Unfortunately, it's not a, a space battleship, but it still, you know, fits the pirate theme. It's a 2-mana, 3-4, with crew for only one. Whenever Subterranean Schooner attacks, target creature that crewed it this turn explores. I think you guys have seen this card. <laughs> and the exploring also, again, pairs really nicely with that Iron Apprentice, so I like that a lot. We have Disruption Protocol. I guess this could totally be your counterspell of choice. I think Disruption Protocol fits the Space Pirate theme the most, though, too. I'm, I am a little concerned about the double blue, though, so... Instant speed, counter target spell, as an additional cost to cast this spell, tap an untapped artifact you control, or just pay one mana. So it could potentially just be a three, and the double blue hopefully doesn't hold us up too often. Uh, more often than not, though, we do want this to be two mana, and then tap an uh, artifact that we happen to not be using that turn. We do have Captain Storm in this one. Uh, two mana, two, two, a legendary creature. We're rocking two of them in here. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on target pirate you control. Luckily, it doesn't say like another uh, pirate because you can also just slap those counters onto itself, which happens to be pretty good. Hopefully, we have enough artifacts filtering onto the board for this to actually do something. Also, we didn't want too many of them either because, you know, like it's not a great uh, thing to copy with the Mind Link mech because it does say non-legendary on the mech too, so... We have a high-speed hover bike in here. This is a 2 mana 2 2 uh, artifact vehicle for a crew of only one. So all the vehicles in here are actually crew for one, which is pretty neat. It has flash and flying, and when it ETBs, tap up to one target creature. Beautiful. A little bit more interaction with a couple kite sail larcenists. It has been an absolute MVP every single time I've played with it. 
seems really solid, dude. <laughs> uh, there will be moments too where you target one of your own artifacts to become a treasure just for the sake of ramp. Now, we're not going to be wanting to ramp into anything too much in here. Most likely, you're ramping into doing multiple things on the same turn rather than something huge because the only thing we have on the top end is actually Captain Tezzeret. <laughs> Betrayer of Flesh. This is a 4 mana, 4 loyalty, legendary planeswalker. The first activated ability of an artifact you activate each turn costs 2 less to activate. Cool. As a plus 1, draw 2, then discard 2, unless you discard an artifact card. All right. And we got a minus 2 here. Target artifact becomes an artifact creature. If it isn't a vehicle, it has base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. That seems pretty good, man. And it's like, it's permanent too. So if it is a vehicle, for example, we could permanently power up Mind Link Mech, which actually sounds pretty powerful. And if it's not, maybe you're powering up a map token from the Spyglass Siren or something. Also seems pretty good, man. That does have a minus six here as well. I don't know how often we get to it, but it's on the card. So you get an emblem with whenever an artifact you control becomes tapped, draw a card. A little bit overkill at that point, I would say, right? The mana base. I'm rocking all the rare dual land, including the uh, pain land, the storm carved coast, the restless spires too. We have a mech hanger over here as well. It taps for one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast pilot or vehicle spells. However, we also have this bottom utility ability for three. You can tap this. Target vehicle becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. Sometimes you just fizzle out of having creatures on the board, but your vehicles are still around because sometimes they're pretty hard to remove, right? So, like the mech hanger could help us get that last bit of damage through. Crucible of Defiance, of course, Soaring City, leaning towards the islands because that is what the deck is heavily leaning towards. You have some honorable mentions. All of these almost made the cut. Fading Hope, I thought about instead of a uh, Volted Surge. However, Volted Surge fit the space theme a little bit more <laughs> than the Fading Hope, which uh, doesn't really fit the space theme. Uh, I thought about other counter spells. I've, I've never been great at playing with counter spells. So honestly, like the protocol can be your counter spell of choice or like your interaction of choice. I could totally see as well, right? So it's something to consider. Thought about Prosperous Thief for this one, that could be cool. Thought about other pirates like Breaches, Eager, Pillager, which seems like a pretty powerful pirate, but it didn't make the cut this time. And I thought about other vehicles too, like the Belligerent, but yeah, didn't make the cut. Okay, guys, hopefully that's everything. Let's go ahead, take it into some ranked, and see how we do. Okay, well, oh, right into that first game. Okay, well, <laughs> that ruins what I was about to say. Now, what am I expected from the list, though? Um, the last time I played Is It Artifacts, it, the list looked a little bit different. Relatively recent. Well, this seems like a solid first hand, I suppose. We definitely have a lot of early stuff to draw into. The opponent goes first. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm expecting a little bit. I think this style of Is It is relatively set up has a lot of great cards. That's a lot of land. I don't think we need any more land for the rest of the game. Era of Enlightenment, dude. Nice. What on earth? Ooh, Tezzeret. Okay. I'm tempted. Never mind. <laughs> we don't have an artifact on the board. I was, I was going to say, I'm tempted to keep the disruption protocol open, but... You need uh, something else. You need either three mana or an artifact to tap down. Vicious Farmhand. Okay. Bolted Surge, not bad. The draws have been good. I don't mind any of the draws. Arsonist, Power Up, Schooner. I suppose that's fine, right? Oh, I just got some lag. Uh, Submit Zero, I might as well... I might as well get the actual swing in. Like, I don't like ramping them. But I also don't like the chump here either. Like, I'd rather get the damage through, you know? Do I want this? I guess I want this. I don't know what I'm up against, guys. But it looked like they had a lot of... They might have a lot of little dorks. So... A couple Voltage Surge might be fine. 
oh my, that's going to be a problem. And that's when that dies too, right? Exile the top card of your library. Target opponent loses life equal to its mana value. Uh, if it's an instant or a sorcery, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. That's going to be a problem, dude. Um, so it's casting it, right? So I suppose we could go disruption protocol on whatever it is. Really don't want to sacrifice the schooner just to hit the, just to hit it though. We will have the three open. We could bounce it with Soaring City. if We want to do it that way. Azeret could come down, could turn the schooner into a permanent creature, right? The tough decisions. I really don't want to deal with this, though. One second, opponent. I am thinking, buddy. A lot of decisions here, because I'm thinking, like, leaving that protocol open could be really good, too. Everything seems okay. Everything seems okay. But I don't want them to get that ETB either. Man, that's a tough decision. Okay, I'm going to go Voltage Surge. <laughs> and then we'll counter whatever free thing they do. That seems so bad, dude. But we're going to get three in the air. Let's see what ends up happening. Oh. It was a four man. It was depopulate. Okay, I'll counter that. I guess. And then we'll swing for three. Depopulate gets around the ward cost on the kite sail larcenist, but I mean, they do have enough mana to. Well, <laughs> so depopulate would have wiped the board if we would have kept disruption protocol for sunfall. It wouldn't have done anything, anyways. Hey, Captain. I guess while they're tapped out, it's a great turn to get Tezzeret down. Uh, I am going to play the Soaring City to make sure I have open mana for Voltage Surge if I want to use that at instant speed. Uh, but also having one mana for anything else we see off the top could be good. Uh-oh, no artifacts. Disruption Protocol could be really good against this build. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Discarding two of these hurts my soul. I, I think Captain Storm and Disruption Protocol. I think the Larcenist is really good. That's a tough call, though. And let's not forget that we have the Restless Spire, too, if we want to start attempting swings with that. Yoldred gets around the Voltage Surge, but good thing we kept that Larcenist in hand. They go ahead and power up. They're going to swing at the Tezzeret. I'll take that out. If, if they were going to go for the swing at face, we might have saved Voltage Surge for a different threat, potentially. Okay, Oak and Siren. So we could start with the draw and then discard the Siren when it comes time. We could also power up Siren to be a 4-4. Four -four. I, I think we start with the draw, though. No, no, we don't start with the draw. We do not start with the draw. The Oldred punishes. So we will submit zero. Submit. Turn you into a treasure. And now we'll draw. And we'll attempt to just discard one here. Oh, second Tezzeret. I'd actually... No, I should keep the second Tezzeret, right? Right? I think so. We also get the swing then off the land which I say is worth it. Siren, uh, Spyglass Siren. Um, map token. I guess like anything's fine here, right? And anything that we can play, we should probably keep on top. Up against a kind of a bizarre control list from the opponent. Kind of neat. Not like 100% certain what to play around, though. Breach the multiverse for free after playing one with the multiverse. This is, this is multiverse control, right? Actually, yeah, that's pretty sick. Oh, Kaya, dude, we're in trouble, bro. They found a Captain Storm off of us. That, uh, luckily, there wasn't too much. Um, scry one. Yeah, we'll take that action since they they milled the other thing. Yeah, we definitely don't want the land. 
Okay, uh, we could go minus six, get that emblem, attempt to draw every time an artifact's on the board. Minus six, we have second Tezzeret too. We're actually really struggling to get artifacts onto this board. Which is a little silly, huh? I'm gonna get that emblem while we can. And maybe we can keep up pace, right? We do have the first strike swing on the ground with the Restless Spire. But not if we want Tezzeret down. So maybe we'll find another land off the Tezzeret. We'll go plus, see what we see. Huh. If we play the other land, power up Spire. They block. We're losing a lot here. Maybe just like getting Tomb Raider down is a little better. Actually, keeping... No, no, I don't have any artifacts. I'm going to go for the land. It's super silly, but... We get that swing with the Spire then. And we'll full swing at the Kaya. And they uh, chump block, but the first strike protects our land. High speed hover bike. Hey, at least it's an artifact. And it's kind of like I said earlier, anything that's not a land is probably fine. Which is funny to say because then we ended up going for the land off the Tezzeret too. Okay, Ward 1, they easily pay for it. Oh, they get, they get the copy over there. Kai is a big problem, dude. It is down to 1 now, so maybe we'll be able to take care of it. That's a free Lord Xander. <laughs> Veraska. Oh my god. Goodness, dude, the opponent has terrific, terrific cards. Um, well, I don't know how exactly, I don't know exactly how we get around this, like, at all. I'd like to get more down. I'd like to actually have artifacts to tap, but we're really struggling. I guess we go for the draw, but then, like, if we end up... Oh, no. Okay, so we decline. We discard the two Restless Spires, right? Yeah, because we want the high-speed hover bike, and we want it for their turn, unfortunately. The Kai is going to stick around. I think this is heavily leaning towards the opponent, guys. It's really cool that we got the emblem on Tezzeret, though. And outside of that, uh, the deck kind of did a thing. Wow, Cityscape Leveler. Um, They're going to destroy the Tezzeret. Yep. We do get a Power Stone. Hey, that'll help us cast uh, <laughs> some cards in our deck. Um, oh, guys, high speed. <laughs> high speed Hover Bike wants to come down before they're able to attack, first of all. But we could still tap down the Cityscape Leveler. It's like I said, it's heavily leaning towards them anyways. We'll take the damage. They got the plus two there. Like, I don't think there's a comeback, even if we stop Lord Xander's attack. But we can at least take out the uh, city cityscape leveler. We can take that out of the blocking equation. Well, as long as they don't get another blocker down here, too. Oh, no, dude. The opponent's deck actually looks pretty fun. Uh, it's missing something, though. It's, it's, missing, it's missing the... Oh, my goodness. It's missing the color red. That's what it's missing. High speed hover bike. Yeah. They ended up getting two more blockers down that turn. Dude, a good game opponent. Uh, well, hold on. We can totally draw off the power stone. Oh, yeah. Look at us. Look at us go. And we could technically draw off the map token, too. <laughs> it's really cool, actually. And that does mean if we would have swung in with the high-speed hover bike, we could have drawn more there, too. It's actually really neat. Uh, outside of that, there's no actual way to tap with the high-speed hover bike, right? So we would have swung into the vampire, gotten an additional draw. Yeah, I know. Good game. It was cool. I'll go ahead and power up the high-speed hover bike, just like to completely play this out. The opponent's swing looks pretty fun, too. I love that the Power Stones actually work really well in our favor for the uh, the Tezzeret, too. So we can chump there, and Trample gets through, so I guess, like, Larsenist would be a good block as well. 
We ended up only having six cards remaining in the build as well. Yeah, as far as like control builds go, like sometimes they're like super miserable. While this deck looks like it would be miserable to go up against, that just like it just wasn't a miserable match. You, you know what I mean? Like it was tough, but I don't know. It was, it was kind of a good time. <laughs> Call me crazy, man, but every now and then I don't mind going up against control. So far, from, from that first game, it really feels like we don't have enough artifacts packed in, right? Or enough ways to get artifacts onto the board, so I guess we'll see what ends up happening here. Hmm. Oh, no red source. Well, should we mulligan? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Most of our hand requires that red source. Okay. Ooh, no creatures now. We should probably keep it though, right? 23 land in this build. I'm going to send the island. There's a much higher chance that we get the third by the time we, it comes time to actually play the Mind Link mech. And sending anything else here could be risky. We definitely want as much as possible to play. Worst comes to worst, if we don't see the third... Oh my goodness, that is our third schooner. Well, I'm going to go reef and... Now we have Surge open. We want to use that on something. We will be taking the one from the pain. Start with the swing. I think we're just going to take the swing. I think we're going to just take that one, yeah. If you play a tap source, they pass it back. Okay. I don't mind being a little patient with that Voltage Surge. Oh, there we go. Bye, Glass Siren. Um, now I'm just going to play Schooner, though. That would have been excellent turn one, obviously. For our turn one. Deep Cavern Bat. Well, crap. I bet they... Well, we have Voltage Surge. That's probably the pick, huh? I was going to say, I bet they take Siren, so that way we have no creatures to play. But then we just Voltage Surge and play Siren anyways. So that was our one piece of interaction in hand. Luckily, Deep Cavern Bat shouldn't be too much of a threat past that, so. All right, we're going to have to start exploring because we definitely want to start sending some land into our hand. So let's go ahead and power this up. And I will explore off of this map onto the schooner. How do you guys feel about that? Against Rakdos, it might actually be pretty difficult for them. I'm going to send the Mind Link mech. We are definitely looking for land here. Oaken Siren. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think that's worthwhile. I definitely want the land, but I also don't mind. Like, any artifact creatures, when go for the throat, is like the main piece of removal, probably. <laughs> now, Rakdos can also play stuff like a braid, too, so. Definitely something to think about, but. Right. Wonder if they power up Restless Fence. Oh, they go for the go for the throw on our one creature that we have. So luckily, Siren's coming down. Indy, nice. Do they go for the buff on the bat? Because that lifelink could be really good for them, especially since they know that they grabbed our one voltage surge. They don't know what else is in hand, but still. And they know what we're drawn to. Yep, yep. Buffing the bat. Inti with bat seems wild, actually. Buffing the stalker, too, because of its ability. We're kind of in trouble, guys. So hopefully, off of this explore, we find some land to play. Or, I guess, okay, <laughs> I'm going to send the protocol. We definitely need that third mana. See, I sent that third on the mulligan, too. I could have sent one of the schooners, but then we ended up drawing the third schooner, too, which we didn't know that was going to happen. We're doing great for only having two mana. It really showcases the power level of Subterranean Schooner, too. And just as a vehicle in general, it's just uh, really good stats in the Explorer's Wild. Go for the throat. Yeah, it doesn't hit much for us, luckily. 
But for that full swing, we are in danger. Opponent is going up to 16 here, gaining a total of four off the bat so far. Okay, they go for the discard with the mountain. So I guess they plan on buffing that bat a little bit further. It was a cut down. Luckily, they don't have the mana available for that. So they buff the stalker again because of its ability. Well, it's not... It's not land, but it's something we can play... We have ramp into the mind link mech, but then we can't screw up our creature. And at this point, like, we're kind of in trouble, man. Inti can buff that bat again, too. The menace on the ground, the pain damage from the reef. Oh, yeah, dude. I really wish I didn't send that land earlier, but also, this has been quite a few turns to not find our third as well, right? Okay, let's let's see what they end up doing because their target with go for the throw onto the captain will have us crewing up the schooner before combat, which means they probably don't swing with Inti. The stalker gets the menace through regardless. If they they don't have to swing with Inti for the bat to get by our flyer anyways. So yeah, really really stuck between a rock and a hard place this time round. Uh, the triple schooner was really bad, actually. So the target, and then we power up schooner to make sure that Inti can't swing in. And the uh, appraiser, too. Uh, but it, actually, it still might be a full swing since we're only at seven. Because then they're forcing us to block. Because we can't let... Let's see... We can block here and here, and then six gets through, down to one, which we could very well perish. They have red in here. Go for the swing. They go for the swing with the stalker, and if they don't full swing, maybe we double block that stalker. Get that off the board. Let's see where they buff with the empty, actually. Yeah, Inti doesn't have to swing. It's any swing. Ooh, Trumpeting Connoisseur. And they might actually hit something off the Inti ability, too. I think they'd want to... Let's see. I think they want to buff the bat. Like, the lifelink has gone the extra mile for sure. They end up hitting an appraiser, so they won't be able to play it, but... Okay, we'll take four, and we will double block the Stalker. We lose the Siren, and I mean, that, that's pretty much that, that's pretty much that, I would say, right? One, three, but I'm curious. Yep, no land. Oh, buddy. Let's see if we find land off the Schooner Swing, which we realistically, we couldn't swing last turn because uh, the opponent was about to mind link mech. Oh my goodness, guys. So 15 cards in. I guess technically we saw three land in the top 15 cards because I sent one to the uh, mulligan, right? Even if we had the third, the opponent's deck looked really good. Yeah, they had Restless Vents available at any point too. Good game. Good game, opponent. Let's see if we can draw a little better in the next one, huh? Because it did feel a little unlucky. I wonder what the statistics there are technically. Because if we saw three in the top 15 and then there were 20 remaining in the rest of the deck, where there was 45 cards in the deck, one of them was the land we sent back. So 20 out of 44 then. I guess, I guess technically it, it wasn't that great. <laughs> I mean, at some point, at some point, we should have seen a land, especially in the last couple turns, right? After the exploring. All right, opponent, what you bringing to the table, buddy? Oh, no, no blue source. Yee, another mulligan, I guess. We have a lot of dual lands in here, man. Okay, all right. Yes, we keep, but now I'm afraid to send a land. Is it mind link mech? 
And we have so many cool lines in this build, but blow opponent. I'm I say I say we got unlucky in that last game. Let's send the land again. Right? Uh, yeah, it, it definitely felt unlucky, so. Planes. Oh, and also I didn't I didn't drop them the hello in return. Okay. Valiant Veteran. Oh, buddy, we're going to be in trouble if we don't get something established here. They went first, too. Okay. Definitely drawing things in awkward orders, I would say. Uh, do we just go right into the map? Okay, we should, we should do it, right? Well, we have open mana, nothing to do in hand, and we got to search for more land again, so. <laughs> oh, no, what have I done, right? Um, outside, ooh. oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm going to take the five because Siren, Siren is, well, oh, Voltage Surge, okay. So we could do that after the, after the target from the Frontliner. We should keep an Emergency Blocker back, but then they could find their third and go right into like a Brutal Cathar. Protocol's not open because I got rid of my map token. Oh, man. Do I have 23 in here? I hope I do. Hoverbite could come down too, but it's going to be Voltage Surge for the turn onto the Veteran after the target from the Frontliner. Siege Veteran. Okay, they have two targets happening here then. Let's see. Let's see if we can have them waste one of these targets. Frontliner. <laughs> okay. Either way, we want to take out the veteran. So, yeah, they're going to target the veteran. So it, it would have been much better for us if it was the uh, counter that we were wasting. Commit zero. And then we could block the frontliner. Oh, the veteran gets them a 1-1, one, one, guys. We better block here before Brutal Cathar comes through. Either way, we're in trouble because now that Siege Veteran's on the board, they start restocking everything. Oh, no, guys. Oh, no. So taking... Oh, my. So taking out the Veteran before... Wait, there's there's like a thousand Veterans here. Wait. um, Taking out the Valiant Veteran before Siege Veteran hits the board means that the counter would have went onto the Frontliner anyways, so... Okay, well, we better tap one of these down, I suppose. Uh, either way, that's going to be happening. I guess we could have tapped down wherever they were putting the target, but it was going to go on to one of the one ones anyways, so either way we'd be preventing two. And then the swing for the frontliner. Oh, we could have prevented three if they doubled down, though. I see, I see. Well, we'll see if we can go ahead and get the third mana here. We do not find it, guys. That is alarming to say the least. Let's see if we find it on the map. Oh my god. Hey, Voltage Surge is pretty good though. But I'll send it. Mainly because if I can survive next turn, I want to see what card is on top of the build, right? Because this time, again, we saw three. We're 47 in. I sent that land. I still feel like we got unlucky. I'm going to go check out the list, make sure we have 23 in here, guys. Because it would be pretty silly if I'm doing all this and saying all this, but I only have like 20 land in here or something. You know what I mean? They so go ahead, activate the Valiant Veteran ability from the grave. Buff on up. Soldier's looking super spicy still. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll crew. I'll crew for fun. We're, we're dead regardless. Okay, guys. I believe in the list. Let's hope that we don't go into a mulligan, first of all. That <laughs> Let's hope our opening hand is actually decent. But then also, I do want to double check just real quick. Always keep an eye down on the chapters at the bottom of the video. 23 land. Okay. Okay. That's a lot of dual land, too. Okay. <laughs> just just double check it, make it sure. <laughs> we're fine. We're fine. I do believe in the list, actually, I, and I'm still expecting a little bit. I do think there's a lot of power packed in. 
so far, space pirates having a tough time. Uphill battles. Uh, in that last one, if we would have prevented that one one from spawning, it wouldn't have done anything, uh, luckily. Uh, that We weren't coming back from that regardless of my plays. And now we just have two land in the opener, but we actually have stuff to play. And that's another reason too, right? Like 23 land with all these one drops and two drops and everything totally makes sense. I think, I think it's actually going to just be Soaring City into Spyglass, take less damage. Like no matter what deck you're against, they all know how to just plug uh, just crazy amounts of damage through. Okay, Kamano. Right, I think taking less damage was the right call there, huh? I am going to attempt to outpace them, especially since we went first. Uh, Captain Storm is really good. Uh, uh, if you can start to buff it above the burn range of Mono Red. And of course, they could instantly burn it, but they might not. So Spear, hopefully it's not Play With Fire for that storm. Come on. Monstrous Rage. Okay, they figured we weren't blocking anyways. So they just go for it beforehand. Taking six here, down to 12. That's a pretty, that's a pretty normal line of play for Mono Red, so nothing too surprising, I'd say. We take one for the Tomb Raider down to 11. That could be bad. I don't mind the Oaken Siren. Buff the Captain to three. Land would have been best case scenario. Trying to buff the Captain too high anyways. I'm going to go Oaken Siren here. It blocks Phoenix Chick in the air. And I think... Since Captain Storm already has a huge target on his back anyways, I think I'm going to buff that Siren in the air too. How do we feel about that? And it has Vigilance as well. So kind of spreading our targets out a little bit. I think the opponent doesn't care too much about our board state. I think they're definitely, their main target is our face. Woo, second Swift Spear. Okay. Now the question is, this uh, keeps the trample. The question is, what's in their hand, right? I'm going to attempt the etching block. We know that these Swiss spears are going to get buffed, right? Losing Captain Storm like this would be awful. But maybe a chump would be worthwhile. Maybe it's not another monstrous rage. Keeping the storm on the board seems right, but if we don't see our third land again then we're not going to be able to buff it above a lightning strike anyways. They actually go for the lightning strike on the siren to save the etching and the chump. So we actually ended up not taking four damage for the turn. Hey, we saw our third. Let's go, guys. It's a tapped land, unfortunately, but still. <laughs> um, Schooner is a great block on the ground. We could attempt Apprentice and then go Map Token. On to the apprentice, kind of like spread. I actually I don't mind this at all. Um, actually, get this above lightning strike range doesn't really matter. I think. I think we're in danger regardless here. More land, hey, we we have our fourth for next turn, guys. We definitely have to keep blockers back. Fourth mana, full swing going to attempt these blocks and Trample's going to get through. Again, we're just in serious danger. And Storm, play with fire. Yep, that'll do it. That trades, no targets, plus all the exiles anyways uh, because of the etching too. Hey, an untapped fourth actually. Oh man, things really aren't lining up for us, huh? I didn't even have to play the untapped. Well, we could have just played the Restless Spire. Unfortunately, we're most likely dead on this turn anyways. But yeah, we could have got the Restless Spire down. Bloodthirsty Adversary. Oh yeah, we're dead. 
lightning strike to face and full swing. We'll let them full swing. We actually have the schooner power up too, so that's not bad. That's not a bad block at all. The Swiss Spear with the Trample the entire time is super brutal. Actually, yeah, it's it's got to be a full swing. Good game opponent. Four losses in a row, guys. Are, are we okay? Send help. We're 40 minutes in. I believe in the list. Let's end on a high note, man. Let's do this. <laughs> Just casually going backwards in rank. We're fine. We're totally fine, man. Come on, space pirates. My my poor theme decks, guys. This this reminds me of the holiday season. <laughs> Our Christmas themed decks had a rough time. Come on, space pirates. Okay, not a bad hand. We have the mana we need. We don't have a turn one. Well, we, we do. We do if we want it. If we want a turn one, we do. We should, right? Just because, like, nothing's been lining up particularly well for us. And so, like, while we can, we better. You know what I mean? Recruitment officer. Okay. We can get there again, soldiers. We can totally get there. We don't have uh, double blue yet for the protocol until we get the spire down. I don't plan on blocking here because I want a creature on the board to power up Schooner. All soldier with caverns. Well, protocol's not going to hit their soldiers anyways. That could be an issue. High speed hover bike. That's actually really good. Do we start with the swing? Do what we see. You could see like an untapped land, for example. Yep, start with the swing. I wouldn't mind the counter here. Oaken Siren. Honestly, it feels like anything that's not a land now. Like, I'm I'm super scared that this game's going to go the opposite direction as the other games, and we're just going to, like, flood. But I'm totally fine keeping that on top. Then we do have a play where we could go map, get a counter onto the Siren. Could go third, go brutal. Bolted Surge. Okay. So we want to... I'm going to buff Siren over the Schooner. Because the plan is to get, okay, the plan is to get the Oaken Siren down. It's going to be Resolute Reinforcements, huh? Okay. See if we have a better target for the Voltage Surge. That's a good target, first of all. Yeah, these soldiers can't be countered, guys, so this Disruption Protocol is just going to be chilling. Well, the ones that use the Cavern of Souls, of course. Go for the swing. I'm assuming they... Oh, they're still going to hold some back on the ground, though. So we're going to take care of the veteran while we can. Submit zero. This is a lot less damage. It's only three. But they do have enough blockers on the ground, or chump blockers at that. For the schooner. At what point are we going to be in danger? Crucible could be good. Kind of feels like they're going to be buffing this wide board state again, though. High speed hover bike could slow them down a little bit with a tempo play, right? So I think it's going to be Crucible. No point. I mean, yeah, disruption protocol, we won't have double blue anyways, so we might as well go for those auto tap because we're just going to be keeping high speed hover bike open. And for some reason, I think we can outpace this. So I'm going, bro. Um, a chump isn't bad, it's just one less voltage surge. We should probably keep that, right? Yeah, one less soldier. They could go down to 10 here. Like, my gut instinct is telling me they're going to buff this wide board state again. 
Okay, down to 10. Hopefully this high-speed hover bike does a thing for us here. With a lot of flyers already on the board anyways, they call Soldier on the courtyard. Four mana. Yeah, the other Voltage Surge they now know about. They see that on top. Crap, guys. Okay. So high-speed hover bike before the mural hits the board. I actually do something in the right order, right? Tap down the officer. They have a swing for five. They're kind of getting to the point where they're in danger, though, because we have five in the air with the Oaken Siren. We're going to keep a chump blocker on the ground just in case we instant remove the mural. So if we want to get more in the air, we do have Restless Spire. We could power that up down to nine, tap it, power up high speed hover bike. That's seven in the air. It's not quite there yet. Give me one second, opponent. I am thinking, buddy. Because we want to do Voltage Surge on our turn, and we're going to have to hit the mural, I would assume. Yeah, because we can't do anything fancy. I think we just swing for five and ditch the high-speed hover bike to take out the mural, right? Is that what we end up doing? Because that means we can get there next turn. We got to do this now. And we're going to keep the schooner. Well, actually... Okay, Oak and Siren. Um, there's their fifth. How many soldiers do you need to be swinging in with uh, Harbin? Do you need to be attacking with five or is it four? Okay, it's going to be Valiant Veteran. Let's attempt the counter. Wait, 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 wait. They used the, uh, never mind. We can't, we can't counter it. Buff that wide board state. So they did have a second veteran here. Now, Cavern of Souls really helping them out this time. You have a block, which I'm going to block with the... I should probably block with the Restless Spire too, right? They dropped the GGs. Good game, opponent. Getting there against soldiers. We got there, guys. Oh my goodness, man. What a bunch of tough uphill battles. Nothing seemed to be lining up for us, but then this uh, showcased that the deck is capable of having lines. Oh man. Woo. Feels good. Feels good. Uh, that Cavern of Souls was sick for them. If they didn't have that Cavern of Souls, that would have been a perfect counterspell for us. Uh, yeah, we were going to be going for all the blocks because we still don't know what the last card in their hand is. I don't know what else it could have been to buff even further. But taking the one for the Spire to block three uh, it seemed worthwhile. So we're going to block both of those, take the uh, double twos here down to five, and then we're going to swing in the air next turn. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. The Voltage Surges uh, really hit their mark in that game really nicely. Uh, the Temple plays were good. Everything seemed totally fine in that last one. It uh, kind of makes me wish we could play another set of five just to see like how unlucky those first four actually were. Or maybe it's just how the deck was set up too. You never know. Sometimes it happens to be the curve. A few things, right? It's like I said when going over the list. I'm particularly bad with playing with counter spells, and I... <laughs> Uh, and I really know it too, um, but would this be okay if it was just another form of interaction or removal? Probably. And you know, uh, I, I kind of feel like something like lightning strike could be pretty cool, uh, but I don't know. Maybe that's just the red player in me, but I feel like the deck does know how to plug damage through. And it probably shouldn't be, if, if you're going to drop the protocols, it should probably be something else that actually gives you artifacts too, because some, some of those games felt pretty rough actually getting artifacts onto the board, but then like maybe we get some vehicles established and then it felt pretty hard to actually get creatures onto the board. And it's just kind of like a, a back and forth thing there where the last game didn't showcase any of that. We actually, it just did the thing that it was supposed to do uh, and it did it quite nicely as well. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me not enjoying 
playing with counter spells as much as other cards too but like this is on the chopping block for me at least and it's gonna hit so much though when it does come time uh, the double blue felt greedy even though it probably shouldn't have felt greedy here's our blue sources over here guys here's our blue sources that's that's a lot that's all the land except for four has blue in it so i mean technically it should be easy uh, the tapped lands the restless spires being tapped I uh, kind of felt a little awkward, but I really like we just don't have too many other great is it lands anyways. Uh, that being said, if you didn't have all these rare lands too, I could easily see trading some of these out for the budget options, the ones that gain life and everything too. That's totally fine. But I do think the dual lands are going to be that important though. So uh, mainly because, yeah, it's relatively greedy over here with double blue there, double blue there. Uh, we have like lines of play where you're still going to want to have like a red source open for a voltage surge or something like that too. Maybe there's going to be lines where you want to play double goblin tomb raiders on the same turn or something. You know what we didn't see today, man? We didn't see the tomb raider with the mind link mech. We didn't see mind link mech at all, did we? Ah, oh, man, I, we, we drew it, but we never actually got the land to play it out. So that kind of sucks. I really wish we could have seen this actually come into play as well. Oaken Siren seemed cool. I really liked the Vigilance on this. Uh, the Vigilance actually really coming into play in that last game too, where you can see how the Vigilance plays a key factor in the tempo side of things too. That was cool. Yeah. And the same concept with the high-speed hover bike. Then this is just like an extra artifact that you really don't mind sacrificing to the Voltage Surge, especially when you're about to win anyways. But that was cool. Iron Apprentice didn't really do a thing either. Is there a different artifact creature that we could potentially trade out and i i do think it has to be a creature because of all the vehicles in here i don't know i think iron apprentice would totally be fine maybe just more testing required more games required to actually see it do the thing i especially just like how it pairs with the exploring though too of course yeah more testing required that's where i land on this one of course when i put it up on aether hub i definitely gotta label it as jank if i remember because that was a lot of losses in a row, huh? Guys, let me know what you thought of the build down in the comments. And while you're down there, definitely check out the description. We have the Discord link there in the description, as well as the Patreon link if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. Yeah, if you made it this far to the video, y'all are champions for real, and I will see you in the next one.